This is Selena Wong from Fighters.com with Mike Quick Swick, who has a fight coming up December 10th. Um, how is your recovery from your surgery? How has that been? Really good. Yeah. Actually, uh, you know, the, the surgery went really well, and uh, it was something I definitely had to do. Mm -hmm. It had been a, a hindrance in my training and in my fight, so uh, it went good, and I'm back to training full on, and I feel great. You know, 100%. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life, yeah. Great. Uh, you'd worked your way into the mix at middleweight. Uh, how do you feel about having to start over and work up the welterweight ladder? I don't feel I'm necessarily starting over, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, getting to that top contention spot, I definitely am. But you know, it, it's it's a challenge. You know, I, I'm I'm in the sport not to become a champion and defend my belt ten times and quit. You know, it's like it's I want to have a career and I want to, you know, in careers there's ups and downs and and there's a bunch of things that you have to deal with and. Uh, you know, switching weight classes offered a lot of challenge, you know, jumping into a division that's uh, just as talented, if not more. And, uh, you know, being welterweight, it, it adds a lot more elements to the game than middleweight. You know, the, the guys are faster. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, just, it's a different type of fighter at welterweight. And, uh, you know, it offered challenges. And, and, you know, me being a competitive guy and, and loving the sport, I, I saw it as a great opportunity and a great challenge to come in and, and try to work my way up. And, and that's what I'm doing, one fight at a time. Okay. Well, you've called your fight with Josh Berkman in January um, a fight that you won by majority decision, your worst fight ever. Uh, how much did the change in the weight class affect your performance then, and do you feel you've settled into the division comfortably now? Yeah, it wasn't necessarily the, the weight. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the first time I cut weight, but it was more the the mental aspects of the situations. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I was coming off the loss to Okami in my hometown. I was given a main event fight, you know, and, and I was the headliner, and... Uh, and it was a new weight class. I'd never cut weight, so it was just a, it was a lot of issues that I let affect me mentally that mm -hmm. I think I shouldn't have, and it was a learning experience, you know. So it, it wasn't one particular reason that like I wasn't injured or you know it wasn't that I was you know the, the weight cut zapped me. I'm not making excuses. It's just it matured me as a fighter, and I don't mm -hmm. think at that level of my game I was mature enough to deal with the situation right and just and just uh, you know put things aside and go out there and focus and do what I need to do. Um, I didn't, it wasn't as bad of a fight as it looked, I don't think. Um, the only reason I say that is because styles make fights, and I think Bergman was more to blame for the, the, how boring the fight was. Um, could I have done more? Definitely. Definitely could have done more. Um, if Bergman had it came out and not went for a takedown, it would have been a completely different fight. Mm -hmm. I assure you that. I mean, I, I threw, I landed with flying knees and, and combinations and kicks, and um, you know, you can't do that when someone's holding you. Uh, but I let the frustration get to me and, right. and, you know, like I said, the mental aspect of it. So, you know, I take full blame on, on not doing more. But, uh, you know, it was definitely a learning experience and, and I think I'm better for it. Okay. Well, tell me about your uh, upcoming opponent, Jonathan Goulet. How are you going to beat him? Oh, Jonathan Goulet is, uh, is an exciting fighter and uh, I, I plan to, to put on an exciting fight. So. All right. Um, who's helping you the most in your training for this fight? For this fight, uh, Josh Koshek is one of my main training partners. Mm -hmm. Fitch is back in town and, and he's helping me out a lot. Um, you know, when we have a, a gym full of fighters that are all great right. up and coming fighters that are doing good. So, uh, you know, there's there's no lack of training partners at mm -hmm. AKA. So, you know, I have a, a great a great team helping me. Yeah, Koscheck, I believe, fought uh, Goulet in the past. Has yeah. he given you any specific tips on how to beat him? Yeah, Koscheck fought uh, Goulet and beat him in like four minutes or something. Um, you know, and he's a changed fighter. You know, I don't like to look at fights that the fighters have had that are mm -hmm. three, four, five, six fights ago right. because people change so much. And you can, if you study bad habits from fights that are in the past, you know, they've changed. And then, and then you go out there and you're, you know, so I just yeah. kind of look at the last couple of fights. So, yeah. you know, he hasn't really, there's not a lot of input that, that Kashyyyk gave me as far as his style. You know, I mean, it was a one sided fight, but, you know, he definitely uh, has been a big help for me. Okay. Well, tell me your thoughts on fighting on this uh, on this card. Do you have a connection to the military? I'm super excited to fight on this card. Um, I have a big connection to the military. It's my biggest regret in life is not joining the military. Uh, I have a lot of military friends. I've went to a lot of bases. I've uh, you know I've, I've done a lot of stuff for the military. I went to Walter Reed. I, you know I've, I've trained the troops. In fact, I trained the special forces guys at Fort Bragg. So nice. you know it was really cool that now I get to go back to Fort Bragg of all places and I get to put on a fight and. And uh, you know, support the the soldiers because you know, like I said, it's my biggest regret. I have a lot of respect for them, and I get a lot of feedback from them. you know some of my biggest fan base is the military. So it's great to be able to give back and and uh, you know help them out. Great. 
Um, you've trained in Russia, Thailand, and Sweden. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Um, would you say you learned? What would you say you learned in each of these places? And was there an advantage uh, training in another country as opposed to training in the, just the main? Regions? The main places I trained was well. The main place is Thailand. Uh -huh. um, in Russia, I just trained with the the Marines. So right. uh, the MSGs that were stationed there, I just would take them into the squash ball court and. Uh, It, roll around with right. them and <laughs> thrash them because they didn't know much about jujitsu. But um, no, I, we, they helped me out with like some of their hand-to-hand -hand stuff, and like you know, it was cool hanging out with them. I love being around because like, mm -hmm. they're military, you know. And uh, you know, since I had the jujitsu experience and the grappling, they learned from that. And so we just had fun and beat each other up, and and it was it was it was good times. It wasn't anything. The no one's gonna be filming <laughs> instructionals of what happened in the squash ball court, but. Uh, it was definitely fun for us to, to kill time when we're in the middle of Russia and, and, you know, doing what we were doing and stuff, so. Okay. Well, you blogged recently about your interest in snake uh, snake handling and crocodiles. Well, it's not an interest, it's just I'm stupid and <laughs> I, like, do things that aren't really smart sometimes. And I love exploring the world, like, traveling uh -huh. is my biggest thing. So, I want to see the whole world, you know, before I die. And uh, Southeast Asia has been a big part of that because I love Thailand and uh -huh. there's training there. and. You know, I, I like to interact with the culture and the people and um, also do stupid stuff. And so, like, when, when I went to the snake charming, you know, a little show where they, they let the snakes strike at them, I, uh, you know, I had to test to see how quick I was, and it was so stupid. Were you pretty quick? I was quicker than the snake. It almost <laughs> got me. Like, it struck at me one time. It's on my video, on my YouTube page. But, uh, yeah, to look back to think if I had got bit by a, a mangrove snake in Thailand, it would have been a, definitely a bummer for my vacation. But uh, that, you know, that's kind of what I do to get to get excited, and uh, it was fun. And I'm going back in December, so I'm bringing my camcorder, and I'm going to be blogging and videotaping, and we got some pretty interesting things planned. All right, I'll watch for it. All right. Thanks so much for your time, Mike. No problem. Thank you.